I want to talk about, uh, and this, this question comes up all the time, so I want to you know, make a video about it and talk to you guys. But um, I want to talk about one of the habitat, deer habitat, deer hunting management's biggest lies. And it involves using your property in the off season. When you're using your property in the off season, does it hurt your deer hunting? Does it hurt your ability to grow a herd? And the answer, and I can say this with 99.999% certainty, it does not. And the reason I say that, there's a lot of reasons, but during January, February, March, April, May, all the way through September, and I'm talking early September is when we should stop at the season. I have a stopping date of working on the property, moving on the property about a month before the season begins. But when you think about it, and what I teach, what I preach, and what I try to practice myself is that the bulk of the deer herd, especially the quality component of your deer herd, is not there during the off season. When you have small properties, and I mean anything from 500 acres to 800 acres or less, and again, I'm not saying that an 800 acre property is not a small property, but what I am saying is you do not encompass the daily lives of the deer herd for 365.7. You can't, even on 800 acres. You really need about 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 acres. So when you hear people talking about, well, I manage a 3,000 acre parcel, or a 50, I own a 1,500 acre parcel, or a 1,200 acre parcel, that doesn't relate to the average person, obviously. And it's not just the size, it's just that they can get away, they can encompass their mistakes. So you can manage a 3,000 acre parcel very poorly and still have good success because the size of the parcel encompasses your mistakes, especially your hunting mistakes, your habitat management decisions and the mistakes. But bottom line is, really important to learn that you can just enjoy your property in the off season. That's a big lie that people have really preached and taught for a long time with the thought that you're going to educate the deer. The mature bucks really shouldn't be on your land in most situations all summer long. And there are exceptions, of course, to that. But the majority of the time, those mature bucks should be coming on your land during late September, October, November, December, and especially how they relate to the movements that you actually hunt and you're learning to manage your hunting pressure for because that's when your property is peaking in both food and cover cover options your browse is at its best at that time in the woods and so that's when you're really going to try to maximize that number of deer the number of deer in your land and of course during the summer months if you have a lot of deer on your land that's bad because they'll carry over so if you have a lot of does and fawns sounds good on paper but they take up space and if you're wondering about that, just watch. We have a video that will be coming out, if it's not out already, but it's talking about buck to doe ratios, and it's using examples of how someone sees lots of deer in the form of does, not a lot of bucks. They have a huge amount of food, where someone else is seeing hardly any deer, but they're all bucks. One person seeing a doe ratio of 10 to, to 1 does to bucks. That other person seeing 5 to 1 bucks to does, and they're in the same exact neighborhood. And a lot of that has to do with how many deer are there during the summer because when I see those big overpopulated by does and fawns uh, properties, you can find those in the summertime. They're usually, are they not, are they those type of properties that suck them in just during the hunting season and they're not there the rest of the year. Usually if there's an excessive amount of does and fawns and they have a problem shooting them, it's during the summer. And if you're driving around your property during the summer, it really doesn't matter. Uh, because if there's does and fawns, you're not going to spook them. Deers, does that are here today are here to stay. I say that all the time and it's true. They have a very small window of daily daylight movement. Uh, their home range, even when you consider all 24 hours, is very small compared to a buck, just a fraction. And so if you keep just an adequate type of cover, adequate amount of food, and you just adequately control your hunting pressure, not even really that well, those does and fawns are going to stick around. They're the great deceivers, and that's why when you drive by them in an ATV, they just stand up and watch you go by, and you think, ah, those mature bucks that are six years old don't, don't really mind, and that couldn't be further from the truth. This is one of our favorite places. We come up here, we shoot a lot of videos here, and I love this place because it's one of our really cool setups that we can hunt fairly easily. And I don't know if you can see, but behind me, we have a double, double set of family traditions up there. You can see the heavy rubber, chain wrap that holds the platform up up there you can see the big seat and everything pretty easy to see up there we have a double and i love this spot right here because we can get into it off a steep finger over on my left side your right side and we can get into these stands without spooking deer because they're bedded about halfway up the ridge point here or around on the inside of the corner 
it's a really easy spot to get in and out. But what I really like about this spot is when you come over here, we get a lot of video and pictures. And you can even see right now, this mock scrape's been used right here. You see they're still pawing at it. They paw at it all the time. There's actually scrapes, scratches in it from deer taking their toes and just scraping that out just recently since it's rained last. We have our water hole right here. I know you can't see that, but it's uh, pretty full right now. You know, people ask when we should fill those water holes. I haven't filled water holes since 2016 because we've had an excessive amount of rain, too much rain. So we haven't had to fill it. But if we do, if you're out here during the summer months, again, we're not spooking any deer. We're out here shooting videos. We shot five bucks off this property last year. We shot four bucks between four and six years old. Diane shot the big king of the forest around here. He's six years old, uh, the split brow buck. And so we're out here all the time on this land. We're shooting videos up top. A lot of times we come to different locations around. We're in here a lot in, in one day, moving all over the place because we don't really care about spooking the bucks. And we want a different scenery for you guys. So you can see different features of habitat that we have. The deer shouldn't be here during the summer. There's the annual whitetail shift that applies directly to bucks. Does and fawns shift their habitat a little bit, but boy, bucks really shift their ha habitat. Years ago, I coined the, coined the phrase, the annual whitetail shift. I wrote a lot of articles on it throughout the years. You can look them up on Google, just look up annual whitetail shift. Look up annual whitetail shift on YouTube. You'll find all my content. It's something that I coined, originated, and really recognized that concept in a lot of different properties around the country. But there's a big shift of bucks in their annual whitetail shift and their annual movements from summer to their fall range because they need completely different types of hop habitat from one to the other. They need summer food and they need summer cover. Summer cover for bucks means big, open, shaded, cool forest, hardwood forest, mature forests are the best where they're not gonna smash their velvet into a bunch of thick underbrush and high stem count per acre. That's exactly the opposite type of cover and food that they need for the fall. They need high stem count cover for the fall. They need quality fall and winter food sources. And a lot of times what I see on a, on a regular basis and when I talk to clients, my own observations for many years is that there's about a mile to a mile and a half difference from where a buck lives during the summer to where he lives in the fall. Think about all those bucks. You go hunt them in October and you think, oh, they went nocturnal, they're not around. And then you see them in the rut and you think, ah, where'd those bucks come from? He was just nocturnal all that time because of the October lull or whatever. No, it's because he was living a mile away or more and he shifted. And that's why if you have a great parcel, even a good whitetail parcel, the majority of the time, unless you're really swallowed up by ag land with a lot of different beans, alfalfa, during the summertime, those bucks should not be where they're at during the summer, during the fall, and vice versa. And that's why it really doesn't matter when, if you're on your land during the off season in any way. And if you were spooking them in January or February and it's at the tail end of the season, those deer are gonna just long forget about that by the time it gets to the season. What I like doing is ending my summer activities, spring activities, leading up to the hunting season about a month before the bow season begins, which is right at that timing for the annual whitetail shift of, of bucks, especially mature bucks that don't want to stay away, from, uh, stick around their mothers and their offspring. They're really independent thinkers. You find there's about a, about a mile to mile and a half off of their summer ranges from their fall. And is it deer habitat management's or deer hunting management's biggest lie? Not really sure, but it's a question I get over and over again, whether it's clients, readers, or viewers. You don't have to stay off your land. And if I thought that was the case, would I be out here talking right now in early May, moving around with the pickup truck, let alone in August when we're shooting videos out here on this land? We'll put out about 208 videos out this year. That's the goal. And you can imagine the whitetail work we do on this land at the same time. So if we're shooting 30 weeks, we're out here consistently. We're shooting a lot more videos on the whiteboard, but we're not doing that to stay off the land during the off season because it really doesn't matter. Could be habitat, hunting management's biggest lie, who knows. But I'll tell you what, in my experience it sure isn't, or I wouldn't be out here in one of my favorite spots with this awesome water hole, this mock scrape right here, this really cool stand location, great access into here. We can pop in here and hunt whenever we want during the hunting season and not spook deer. It's a great spot. 
I certainly wouldn't be out here if I thought it was gonna spook deer. Enjoy your land. Enjoy your land with your family, your friends. Think of ways that you can enjoy it off in the off season. Diane and I are buying some new land and a home out in Minnesota, and I can't wait. And um, we've been on it the last couple days, turkey hunting, driving around, checking trail cam cards. Again, I just want to get to know the land. But the cool thing is about all that, I know I can do so during this time, during the off season, get to know the land, and I'm not going to spook the deer herd or hinder my efforts in any way to be the neighborhood influencer when it comes to influencing not only a quality herd, but a great hunt at the same time.